Today I have three brand new fall DIYs for you. I'm Brandy. This is Making It My Own DIYs. First, we're going to do a Hobby Lobby cotton and burlap dupe. So on a recent vlog that I did or a recent video, I went to Hobby Lobby and saw a cotton and burlap little arrangement that they made, but it was like $16.99. You'll have to go back if you want to see it and watch that last video that I did. And I said I could dupe that. And so it was requested that I do that. So I'm going to show you what you're going to do and you can use... Um, you can use Dollar Tree supplies for this. It's going to take a styrofoam ball, put it in any jar that you want from Dollar Tree. You won't be able to see it, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. I'm going to take some scraps of burlap. I had a little, a little um, bundle of it, and I just cut it in two pieces the same size. I'm going to cut these stems down, and I'm going to cut one about an inch longer than the rest of them. So here's this roll, and this is what I was saying about cutting this into pieces. You see how this burlap fits up to the sides? That's what you want. So choose your jar that is going to fit whatever piece of burlap or fabric that you're going to use to cover your jar. So I'm just doing that here. I'm going to lay this one on top and use the underside, the one on the bottom, as a guide, and just cut that one the same length. Now we're going to take these pieces and turn it so that it makes like a T or a plus sign, just like this, you can see. And then the little jar will go right in the middle. You're going to use some burlap string, or some jute, rather. And I'm going to cut a couple of pieces. I'm going to use these to hold this onto the jar so we don't have to glue this, thank goodness, because we would be burning our fingers. So I'm just going to bundle this up around the top, almost like you would gather up a ponytail. So you're just going to gather it up. I'm going to take a piece of that jute, and we're going to go around where the lid goes on the jar. But we're not using the lid, but in that section, that's where we're going to put it. That's going to be where we cinch it. You're just going to wrap that jute around there and do it tightly as tightly as you can. Hold your fingers on that knot, just like I'm holding that here. I'm trying to hold it so it won't slip. Sometimes it's a struggle. Try to keep it tight, and then we're going to make a double knot in it. I left all this in here so you could see that I'm not perfect. We crafters are not perfect, but I got it on there. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of pull it around so that I have it evenly spaced and that the jar is completely covered. And to make sure that none of that fabric is underneath, um, has slipped below where I've tied it. So I'm going to take the other piece, wrap it around, grab that piece of jute, and we're going to do the same process. You're going to go right over where the lip of that jar is, or the top of the jar, whichever way you want to call it, where you screw the lid on. You're going to go down and tie it in a double knot or triple knot, whatever makes you happy. See, I'm keeping my thumb in place. Now, nice and tight. So once I have it good and tight, I'm going to just pull this up because my burlap had slipped beneath it. So I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to just kind of slide it around a little bit so that it, it gives the appearance that I like. And then you got all this stuff on here. You can just pull off your little unraveled pieces or you can leave them on if you like that look. You can trim this down if you like, but I like the idea of having it long because it looks like a bag to me, like a burlap sack. And that's kind of the idea. So for more security, I'm just going to wrap it around the back since I had this long piece of, of string. And I'm just going to tie it in a double knot. Now everything is nice and secure. I can trim that off. Now we can start putting in the cotton stems. So I'm going to start off with my tallest stem and it's going to go kind of in the middle. You can see how that's going to look. It's going to be about level with the top of my little pieces of burlap. And then at an angle to the side, I'm going to put the next stem, which is shorter. You can see the angle. And then on the back side, we're kind of making a triangle. We're going to do it this way. Now, obviously, if it's going to be against a wall, you want all your pods to be facing outward. 
but if it's going to be in the center of something, you can kind of put them at uh, different angles where they're all facing outward. So I've trimmed off a little bit of that string. I'm going to go back and take about two and a half feet in three strips of my jute. I want to have enough that I can wrap around here and make a bow. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go above it now because I want that fabric like on, um, I think it was in the Hobby Lobby video. It's a little bit closer to the pods, I do believe. So all I'm doing is going up above it. This is above where the jar is. I'm going to tie it. I'm not going to tie it too tight. I don't want it to be too thin. And then I'm just going to make a really simple bow here and fluff out all of my pieces of strings. Just kind of separate them and fix the tails. And that's how that looks. Now this was easy. I had these pods from last year, so they were only a dollar. The jar was a dollar. I've had it since last year. I already had the burlap and I already had the string. So that is a much better cost effective piece. If you ask me, what do you think? The next one is going to be a dahlia wreath. I forgot to mention that all of these projects are from Dollar Tree. Okay, so somebody donated to me a huge amount of crafting supplies and a lot of it, almost all of it was fall. So that was last year and I am going to be using a lot of those pieces to make a wreath this year. All right, so we have eucalyptus and a variety of leaves and we have our dahlia with the burlap. This is a 14 inch wreath from Dollar Tree. You can get it in several colors, just whatever's available to you. And then we're gonna use some type of ribbon or burlap ribbon to go around the wreath. This color doesn't matter so much because we're going to be covering it, um, but you can definitely use, you know, whatever color that you like. You can even use scraps. Thank you so much to those of you who went over and watched my video, the Hobby Lobby video. It is not a very popular video um, for me on this channel. So I know that's not necessarily what my viewers are looking for and that is totally okay. But if you did come by, I'm going to give you a big shout out for watching that. It means a lot to me when you support anything that I do on this channel. Okay, so we're going to continue to wrap around. This will make it almost completely around. I'm going to use dots of glue here and there. You want to kind of pull these not too tight, but you want to kind of overlap as sparingly as you can. And that is one whole spool of that burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. So I've got one extra section. If you have another spool of the same thing, you can certainly use that. But if you have a scrap, and we're just going to say that this is a scrap, you can just wrap that around there. As long as the colors are somewhat the same so that they don't scream through once you get your florals and your greenery on, then it'll be totally fine can't give up, right? When you've invested this much time, there's no giving up. So we're just going to wrap that little spot and put some hot glue on there. And then we're going to just simply trim it off and we're good to go. We've got our wreath form ready. So I'm going to take these beautiful picks. Don't you love these? These are gorgeous and I love these colors. Just going to cut all these off the branches. We're going to make these more manageable. And because we, I'm going to want a full coverage with these leaves, I need them all taken apart. So we're going to, this is so easy. I know I'm out of camera angle here. I know you can't see up there, but this is going to be so easy. You're going to lay one down, kind of pointing off in one direction. We want all of our leaves to point the same way, right? All going in the same direction. And then you're going to put one kind of off to the right. Going to add it a little bit of glue there. You don't have to just burn yourself with the glue. You don't have to pour it out, but you know you're going to need a little bit and hold it in place for just a second. We're going to add the next one kind of upward and to the left. Be sure you connect it to the wreath and the other leaf. And then we're going to take the next leaf and point it, point it up and to the right. And this is how we're going to do it all the way around this wreath. And you won't be able to see any little holes or cracks. I used four of these picks to do this wreath. And I only had one little spot that needed extra, but I'll show you in a minute how I fix that. Continuing along here. And you can just trim off the little stems. Um, I could have cut them shorter, so you may want to just cut yours right off at the base of the leaf to save yourself a little bit of time. 
See, I got all the way around and I just had one little piece that needed covered. So I had another leaf in my pile, in my scrap pile that matches close enough and you won't be able to see it. I'm gonna kind of layer it back behind and glue it down. And there is our wreath with the base of leaves. Now I'm gonna take those dahlias and push all the greenery up to the head of the flower because we wanna use the greenery too. And then I'm gonna cut them off as close as I can to the flower. The eucalyptus comes off the pick very easily. It just slides right off each one of them. Okay, so I'm gonna take the, take the leaves off and then pull this part out. You can cut it off, but it really does just pull right out. I found that out later. Pull the little plastic part off the leaves and then it's gonna be, it fits perfectly over there so you get a flatter surface to attach. See the two different sizes? All right, we're gonna start gluing these down now. This is gonna be in a four. One, two, three, four, north, south, east, and west. I'm gonna start off with the largest of the dahlias and then start working um, in four sections. So I did the top, the bottom, and then I will put one large one on each of the sides, approximately. I don't get the ruler out to do this kind of stuff because I'm not that picky about having it perfect. Um, but you can do it however you like. And then I'm gonna take one of each of the smaller ones, add a little hot glue, and then snug it right up and against the bigger one. I'm gonna use the same pattern all the way around, so it's the top two is large and small, the next two large and small, the next one is large and then small, so we're going on a circular pattern. We're following the pattern all the way around like clockwork. Okay, so gonna put a little glue here and then it's gonna be right above that one so you can see that pattern right this is easy so easy I'm gonna take a piece of this willow cut it up and then use little pieces here and there to give us sort of movement in the wreath to give us a little bit of extra interest so I'm just gonna do the same thing all the way around so if I do it to one little duo of flowers I'm gonna do it to each set all the way around the wreath this is very simple. Just take your time. Then I'm gonna do the same with the eucalyptus, little hot glue, and I'm gonna press it down into the center part going outward of each one of the leaves. I'm gonna continue around just like this, all the way around. And I think that the variety of textures in the flowers, in the leaves, in the eucalyptus which is kind of a plastic and then the little fluffy seedy looking willow branches i think it makes a lot of interest and makes this a really pretty wreath so let's go to these little whatever these are and we're going to cut these off these were just some scraps from last year that i had in another arrangement and in the center of each of the little bunches of flowers i'm going to put one of these little pom-poms or whatever you want to call these little things I took the greenery off of them and I'm gonna use that too because that gives it another little bit of interest. It's kind of spiky, so it's a different texture and it gives it a little more green. I live in the South and this is still summertime and we're thinking about early fall. So we definitely still have some greenery, um, you know, some green in our environment, most of us in the South. So we're gonna continue around. Y'all, if you're enjoying this video, I would appreciate it so much if you would share it with your friends or family or on your social media, anybody who you think would enjoy this video. I would really, really appreciate it. It helps my channel to grow. It lets me know that my hard work is paying off and that people are seeing my, my work and that they're enjoying it. And when my channel grows, I can share back with you by buying more supplies and you know, making more trips to the thrift store and really putting out the best material I can for you. So it's very much appreciated. So we're just gonna continue along and I have more eucalyptus left, so I'm just gonna go back in and add it wherever I think I need it. And I really like the way that the green and that little touch of orange on the tips, it breaks up the orange that is in the, kind of the peachy orange tan color in the flowers and then the base of the leaves on here. You can certainly use any leaves that you like, but if you like this almost monochrome look, then those leaves are perfect with these flowers and this other greenery. 
be sure that you have some pieces that are on the inside of your wreath as well, not just on the outside. And you don't want to glue anything completely flat down. You want it to have some movement because you want it to appear as though it's real. So this is how it looks. Do you like this? Give me a thumbs up if you like this wreath. Okay, now a little tip. You can grab your little heat gun and go over all of those little strings of glue and it'll melt them straight away and you won't see any of that in your final project. Y'all, my videos come out on Mondays and Thursdays at five. Now is our gather box sign. So we've all seen these at Dollar Tree, right? Well, what if you can't find one that is specifically fall, but you want to have one for your home in fall? Grab some scrapbook paper that you really love. And I have some options here. And then we're gonna take it apart. It was already loose on one end and I was scared I was gonna break it. It's so delicate looking, isn't it? So I'm gonna take my metal ruler. I'm gonna gently kind of slide and lift and go back and forth on here until I break the glue seal. It's only glue, it's not nailed or stapled. And watch, it's gonna come off perfectly, yes. Yes, I love it when that happens. Don't you love that? Love it. All right, so the paper won't peel off. I'm just gonna add in some chalk paint and put under here because I don't want this print to show underneath. Y'all, thank you so much for the super chats, the thanks, the coffees, the, for the ones of you who have purchased my t-shirts and my merch store. It is so much appreciated. I don't know if I say it enough, but I try to. I really do appreciate y'all. I, I have the nicest subscribers and it just makes all the hard work worthwhile. So you're gonna let that dry. I've popped my two sides off to make this easier. I'm gonna place that scrapbook paper in all the way to the edge. I'm gonna mark the side, spin it around, and then with my fingernails and fingertips, just press down into that edge. That's gonna give me a guide for where I need to cut. Look at that, isn't that great? So you're just gonna take your scissors and cut it off, or if you have a mat and a rotary cutter, you can certainly use that too, or one of those big paper slicers. Those are pretty cool too. Mine's small and it won't fit a big piece of paper. Okay, look, perfect, I love it. All right, now you can use Mod Podge, you can use glue, you can use spray adhesive. I'm gonna use some double stick tape. Mine came from Dollar Tree, so you can find it there. I believe I found this over where the envelopes and the packing materials are. By the way, that paper that is on my desk is actually um, shipping paper or craft paper. So there you go. I'm gonna lay this down, try to get it kind of centered, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna put the edges back on. I'm gonna press it down to make sure that everything stays in place. And I've had a lot of success with this tape, so no worries about it coming loose. Now I'm gonna put my edges back on, press them down to make sure they're square before they dry. Then, if you just want to use the same top, this is what it will look like. But I'm going to add a little bit of weathering to mine, so I'm going to grab my good old white chalk paint, going to tap most of it off, and just brush it across the gather. And it's going to give it just kind of a whitewashed look, it's going to give it kind of an aged look, and I really just like the way it looks. Of course, if you would like to paint yours, you can paint it any color you like, maybe even navy blue if you have like uh, my greenery or my background there has some blue in it. That would be really pretty as well. Just do you, that's the important thing. Do what makes you happy because there's no wrong in crafting. Whatever brings you joy is exactly the perfect piece for you. All right, now I'm gonna quickly, quickly go around here with my hot glue. I'm going really fast, and I'm gonna put the top back down. Use any type of adhesive that you like, but you know, for video recording purposes, I like to use hot glue because it makes it quicker so I can get the videos out to y'all. Nobody wants to be without inspiration, right? If you want to leave it this way, you could, but I thought, you know what? What about, what about trimming it out with some ribbon? So I have some of this little wired, it's kind of a trim that comes from Dollar Tree and it is the perfect width to go around the edge of this frame. And I think it really does give it a little something extra and it makes it look more high end. And that's really what we want, right? Just because we get our things from Dollar Tree doesn't, we want, doesn't mean we necessarily want everybody to go, oh, I see you got that from Dollar Tree. No, we want them to say, that is so pretty. Where did you get that? 
that's all you got to do. I do the zigzag method with the glue here because it helps catch on to all of the spaces on that piece of trim or ribbon because there's holes in the middle so I don't want glue gushing out the middle so I don't want to make a straight line. Does that make sense? So the little zigzaggy works good for this. I'm going to go all the way around and I'm just using my protected finger just to kind of rub it down and push it into place. While the glue's still hot you can lift it up to get out of line. I want to know what colors you're going to be doing for fall. I know it's early, but it is time to start buying your supplies if you are going to be crafting for fall. So what colors are interesting to you this year? What do you think? Are we doing neutrals, buffalo check? Um, what about the trend with the blue? Do y'all like that? I would really love to know because that helps me get ideas of what I can make that you would like to see. Now once we get back around to the edge, I'm just going to take my scissors and cut it off and press it down into the glue. And that's the bottom because we worked on the bottom so nobody would see the trim. See there, that makes a nice clean finish. Isn't that cute? You could put a bow on the side if you want to. You could fix this however you want. You can make it a hanging sign, but if you want it to be a standing sign, all you have to do is take some of those little stacking blocks that come from Dollar Tree. Feel free to paint them if you would like, whatever you want to do, and then just Put it on the back in a couple of little places. While the glue is still wet, if you'll stand that up, if you're not sure about placement, you can tell how you need to, where you need to position them. So these come off the pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I've got like six of them from a couple years ago until now. You can paint them if you want or spray paint them or leave them silver. But I have these pieces that came from something I got out of Goodwill. Probably another pumpkin. And I love the colors and the, just the, you know, the finish of it. They're really pretty and I like that they're oak leaves. So I'm just going to overlap two in the top for a little something. And they do match the leaves that are in the background here of my little box sign. So I love that. And then we're going to add one here on the bottom, making sure that it doesn't overlap where I can't stand it up straight. It needs to be out of the way so it has a flat bottom, if you get what I'm saying. And now... Once the glue is dried, these are metal, so I'm just giving them a minute. This is how it'll look. Again, if you want to make it a hanging sign, you could do that with some beads. Something like that would be really cute too. But I like the idea of having this that I can sit up anywhere I like. What do you think about this one? So for our early projects, we have this gorgeous little Dollar Tree sign that we flipped and made it look even better. Over here we have our beautiful wreath. This is our dahlia wreath. And all of our supplies came from Dollar Tree for this as well. I love this. Do you like this wreath? I love the colors. I believe in you and I know that you can do these projects. I'm trying to focus a little bit more on the ones individually so that you can get a better look because it was requested. So I definitely want to do what you need me to do so that you can duplicate or get inspiration. Here is our cotton pod burlap arrangement. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. It means so much to me to have you here. I always have a lot of fun and we do giveaways. I cannot wait. We're almost to 15,000. Be a part of that number so that you can have a chance to win some goodies. Be sure that you share this video. It helps me grow and it helps get my materials out to people who maybe don't know me yet. And I would love to have your friends as my friends. Thank you so very much for stopping by and just being you. I hope that you have a beautiful and joyous day, and I will see you again soon. Bye.